What's up, guys? Welcome back to round 14. We were uh, in mid in mid joke right there, Tony. How are you doing, my friend? Doing well. Yourself? I'm I'm doing great. I uh, I'm excited to to do another episode, and we've got a we've got a pretty big show tonight. Yeah, this one's good. This one's got a bunch of stuff on it. It's exciting. Uh, we're branching out. Yeah, branching we're branching out. out. Um, 15 episodes, 15 weeks. We're still around. We're on a a variety of streaming services. So sure, we're on uh, the last the Action Heroes podcast network. I know I used to do that at the end, but hell, we're changing things up tonight. And, sure. Uh, and um, we're, we enjoy being on the network for those listening, audio, take us with you in the yeah. car, watch us on YouTube. There's all kinds of spots where you can find our, our friendly faces now. So, and our voices are even better. So yeah, you'd rather the voices, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't say that. I mean, look at you. You got the nice, hey, forget, the round about it, right? hat on. forget about it for everything. Forget, forget about, about it. it. So we're going to no, talk about Got the nice hat on there, sport yeah. round fourteen. You got yeah, a nice Rick, background Rick, now. Rick's so. my man. Rick got me all my signs. You know? Yeah, they're glowing again tonight. I know. Look at them. I love them. They're good stuff. I love them. Well, let's so we're gonna we're gonna start off this episode talking about uh, Tony on the Rocky World, and not this Tony, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tony Gazzo. Yeah, uh, from from Rocky. So, Mister Gazzo, quite a character. Mister Gazzo was the. Uh, the second rate loan shark, as Mickey called him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in Rocky and Rocky two mm-hmm. played by the great Joe Spinell. Yeah. Uh, who was also in some other movies we'll be talking about in a little while. Sure. Uh, but he, uh, yeah, he was about, you know, he was second rate mob ties where Rocky mm-hmm. was doing collecting for him. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, it's like, that's how you were introduced to Rocky. That was his job. And you, you think about like what other jobs did he try to get? I mean, he probably, mm-hmm. you know, it seemed, I mean, he said in the interviews in Rocky two, they dropped out of school in ninth grade, if I remember correctly. Yep. Ninth. Right. So, I mean, I love that scene too, right? Cause he's like, he's going for these office type interviews eh? and he's got the, the blue leisure suit on and he's like, I know. Like, you're doing there, not you know? looking up at him. He's reading the paper and he's like, how far did you go to high school? And he's like, ninth. Yeah. It's like, well, he didn't even. Did he even show up to high school? So, but he went, you know, and I'm sure he's probably putzing around the docks or something, or maybe yeah. more likely he was, uh, Gazzo and maybe some of his other mob friends were at one of Rocky's fights. Sure. You know, betting on one of the fighters. Hey, Rock, how do you feel tonight? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, something along those lines. So it, uh, became his, and you know, and, and I do believe Gazzo had a, had a soft spot in his heart for Rocky. Mm-hmm. He uh, protected him a little bit when when Buddy got a little mouthy with him about Adrian being retarded mm-hmm. and uh, the truck that ran over his face. Oh and stuff yeah, like that. that's another great line, eh? Remember, you just some guys they just hate. They just hate for no for reason. No reason. Right, I and love it. Like, and it. How great of a line is that? Period for life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You they know what? Do. Another. We always mention how Sly wrote. Um, every word for Rocky. Yeah. And for him to come up with that, it, there's, there's these little, there's these little, um, subtle lines in there. Yeah. I mean, they're not subtle to most of us who, who adore this character or love these movies. We've seen them over again, but think about that, right? Some guys just hate and they you do. know what? For no reason. Very true. Very true. But he looked out for him and gave him some, you know, training money and stuff yeah. and went to his fight and yep. he even bet on him. He even better sure. when he knew Apollo was going to destroy him. He knew yeah. it, but he, uh, he was, I don't want to say connected. You know, Gazzo was mm-hmm. a little bit in yeah. some way, mm-hmm. even though Mickey calls him a second rate loan. He probably was a second rate, obviously. Right. He but at those, dock. those workers at the dock, right? I mean, they know, they know Gazzo has Rocky collected, mm-hmm. who's a fighter, right? Mm-hmm. And a tough, I mean, Rocky street. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rocky's not some, some guy they pulled out of the office and said, Hey, go down there and collect, collect the money right. from this guy, collect right. the money from this guy. He's a thug. Okay. He's, sure. uh, sure. And they know looks, Rocky's a fighter. fighter. They've seen him fight or they heard yeah. about his fights. Mm-hmm. They know he's no joke, even though they know, even though Rocky is a little softy sometimes, yeah. like he didn't break the guy's thumbs. Well, they that's, don't it, and that's just that. it, right? I mean, he chases the guy down on the, on the, you know, <laughs> yeah. little truck there, forklift, yeah. pallet lifter, whatever it is. 
you know, and he's running. The guy's scared. And uh, he says, yeah. Mr. Gazzo says, I get to, you know, 200, I break your thumbs. You know, break your thumbs. <laughs> now you're in. You're in. You're into the mob right there for that. Yeah. But see, the, bad, the, the, the unrealistic part, so to speak, about that scene is that mm-hmm. he did not, he did not break his thumbs, as we both mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't have flied very well in the, uh, in the real mob world. That would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gaz always said, you know, do what yeah. I tell you to do. You make me look bad, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but trust well, me. That's, and that's, that's great too. Cause it, another great scene with the two of them, you know, he kicked, he goes, I pull over here. I want to talk to Rocky for a second. I'm going to let him yeah. out. Goes over there and he gets the inhaler out and, and, uh, you know, that was real, that inhaler. Right. Yeah. That was a well, real, he was real. He was what? having an asthma attack. Mm hmm. But the and, thing is, they used it, right? They didn't yeah. cut it out of the movie. So no, that, Allison said it looked perfect because it looked so realistic. Yeah. Just, and that's just, look, just leave it. That's just great directing because it, it has that real feel to it, right? Mm-hmm. So people can connect with that. It's like, geez, there, I got asthma and, and I'm about to give this guy shit. But, you know, I got to take a puff here real quick. <laughs> but the, And the best part is, you know, can be, didn't break these guys' thumbs like I tell you. You know, don't think I hear things. Right. I like, like Rocky's excuse. He's like, I break his thumbs, then he doesn't go to work, and then he can't pay you the two hundred. <laughs> and, and then Gazzo's like, Let me do the thinking. <laughs> Let me do the thinking. Like you're not you're not being paid to think. Right. I get I get told that a few times. Yeah, yeah exactly. Do what I tell you to do. <laughs> so well. But uh, yeah, I mean and then if Gra- Gazzo went to Rocky Two as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He wasn't in it very much in Rocky no. Two, but he he was there. He was at no. the wedding. Yeah. And, uh, and he was at the fight. As yeah. We well, know. and then you see him when, when Rocky's sweeping up in Mickey's gym, he comes in, which is a great scene. I mean, he, he, comes, yeah. in, he comes in, he goes, what do you, this place stinks. What are you doing here? Besides, yeah. you're Italian. Yeah. Come back to the docks. <laughs> fresh air. Right? Get some fresh air. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I can't do that. You know, you know, Rocky, that's where you can tell that he had a hard time in, in the first film, uh, at the first scene break. Supposedly breaking the guy's thumb. Right. You know, I can't do that stuff no more. He says, yeah. you know, he's married now. He can't be right. breaking people's thumbs and body right. parts and, right? So, but, great uh, scene. great, great scene. No, nope, great is. scene. But what it about is. Rambo? You know, is there, there's a mob connection? I sort of, there speak is, in, there in is, the mob, yeah, in the last Rambo blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last blood. You got the little Mexican cartel going on down there. Right. With the trafficking, right? And, mm-hmm. um, and then a whole other different type of mob mafia connection. Sure. And that's, that's a connected thing. And, and unfortunately, you know, you find Rambo, um, personal connection to these guys, right? Right. Right. So, you know, and it doesn't end well for these guys, right? Like they, it, well, they, they have Rambo, but once he figures it out, once he, you know, sucks mm-hmm. them into his trap, but, you know, it's, that's the, that's sort of the, the theme tonight is the mob, the mob factor, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of different types of the mob. I mean, and obviously the Mexican cartel does a lot of other stuff that mm-hmm. other mobs or mafias don't do. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they, you got to remember, like in that movie and, and we're talking movies, people were, you know, right. Um, you know, they're into the trafficking. Obviously they're into the drugs because the drug and the, the young ladies, right? right. And it has that, it, it really gets real that, you know, that movie. Oh, it's, it's really very real. I mean, that trafficking is, is a real thing. I mean, that's yeah. not a, a, made up for movies. I mean, they no. took that and ran. I actually told my girls to watch it because of how it went down. Mm-hmm. And my yeah. girls are, are, you know, mid to late teens. Yep. And I'm like, this is how quick it could happen. Yeah. This is realistic. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. these, these, these cartels, which is the Mexican mafia, mm-hmm. you know, they know what they're, I shouldn't say they know what they're doing. I hate to say it like that, but I mean, they do. They yeah. know, they know what to do and when to do it. And it's scary. And in this, in, in Last Blood, they knew exactly who to target, right? Right. So, so unfortunately, uh, they messed with the wrong person. So, yeah, they did. And, um, Pretty violent, pretty violent. Yeah, very few uh, people outcome. could take down a whole mafia, whole you know mafia type family. Right, <laughs> so. but uh, there's very few people that can, you know, have access to tunnels and 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 make uh, deadly booby traps like, right, like exactly. John J. Rambo. Right, exactly. Right. But we thought yeah. we would uh, we would take you know something from Rocky and something from Rambo, and since we're on the mob uh, mob theme, Tony. Quite a few mob movies. 
Yeah, we put a, well, we put a little survey out there, as you know, you saw mm-hmm. that. Yep. And, uh, the mob, we said mob sci-fis or westerns and the mob won hands down in a landslide that they wanted us to discuss the mob movies. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, everybody always, they've been around a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been around since James, Jimmy Cagney. They've been around since Humphrey Bogart yeah. back in the forties and fifties. Um, but obviously the big heavy hitters came around, you know, in the seventies and on. Mm-hmm. So we're going to discuss them. And as always, guys, this is not a top 10 legitimately. This is number one. This is number 10. Mm-hmm. This is just us talking about 10 movies that have always been met. Like if you talk about mafia movies, th- yeah. these are run up and they, hands down. These are the 10. That's right. And they sort of just surface. Um, if you, you know, you could ask 10 today and 10 tomorrow. Most of these come up every time. Yeah, there's probably six or seven of them that will definitely be on yep. everyone's list. And then there's, you know, a few others that are mix and match type of deal. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, out of the list that we have, I mean, Robert De Niro's in six of them. <laughs> we said, I, I can see us, I could see this trending towards a Robert De Niro list. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be going, well, hey, I asked Al that Pacino, question. Al Pacino's not far behind. Al well, Pacino's no, in five of them. And I asked that question last week and I already knew the answer. Is there anything yeah. that De Niro cannot do? No. You know, no, there's not. mob action. So De Niro's comedy. in six of them. Pacino's in five of them. Mm-hmm. Scorsese directed four of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, these are the, these are the, the, the top, these are the best. These are the top guns of mafias. Yeah. Top guns, no pun intended. So we'll start off with number 10 at Irishman. Mm-hmm. The Irishman was, uh, was a Martin Scorsese movie, obviously, with, yeah. uh, Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci coming back. Joe yeah. Pesci hasn't acted until this movie for decades. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a long time since he's been there. And, and again, yeah. Pacino and De Niro together mm-hmm. since Heat. Uh, right. actually, no, no, I apologize. No, they did another movie after that. Mm-hmm. But, um, now let me, the, movie. let me interrupt here for a second. Yeah. Make sure you have some time to watch this movie because it's not short. No, it's not short. It's not a it's short a movie. It's, a, it's a but you know show. what? I found it. I wasn't like, oh God, when is this thing going to end? I was like, holy right. Jesus, it's really good. And then right. after it was over, I realized, oh my God, I yeah. didn't realize holy it was crap. that long. But three and a half hours went by. Yeah. It's, you know, there's certain movies, I other movies that I wish were this long or this much detail. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, the, the movie has some truths. It has some yep. fallacies. It has some dramatized movie Hollywood story. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, as always, Scorsese, De Niro, Pacino. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's, it's a top 10. Oh, it's uh, good. Great film. It's on one of the streaming services. I'm sure it yeah. was on Netflix last I looked. Uh, the one after that, uh, again, Donnie Brasco, mm. number nine or number nine, kind of Al yeah. Pacino again. Yeah. Now this one was based on a true story. Mm-hmm. He went and infiltrated the mob. As a FBI agent, Joe Patone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if you watch the film, again, we, we preface this in every single top 10 we do. These movies are 20, 30, 40 years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they should have been watched by now. And if not, then please pause the show and go watch them and then come back and watch the show. Or even, even you might, we're not going to give the whole movie away. So you might hear something sure. here and. And geez, Tim and Tony were talking about that, and uh, yeah. I haven't seen that movie, so I'm gonna check it out. So go check it out. But that yeah, was based on a true it. story, and he did infiltrate the mob. It really did happen, and uh, obviously they did, you know, exaggerate some things. I'm sure for Hollywood purposes, but yeah. for the most part, the the story was told. Right. Uh, I like his I like his forget about it scene mm. <laughs> where where Johnny Depp is explaining forget about it to the FBI agents. They're like, what does that mean? Like, well, it could mean, oh, that glass of wine was so good, forget about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or it could mean, hey, what about that guy, Tim? Oh, Tim, oh, forget about it. He's a good guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. Forget <laughs> so, about it. It's so funny how he talks about that. But um number eight on the list would be The Untouchables. Yeah. Going back to Robert De Niro. <laughs> so mm-hmm. he, uh, this one here is kind of based on a true story because mm-hmm. Al Capone – was a real gangster, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the FBI was after him for a long time. Great movie. Oh, a fantastic yeah. movie. Please watch it if you haven't watched it. One hell of a cast. 
in this too. Sean right? Connery so, won Best Supporting Actor. Kevin mm-hmm. Costner, mm-hmm. who always gives a great performance, yep. gives another one of his great performances. Of course, Robert De Niro, mm-hmm. being the method actor that he is, he gained like 85 pounds to play play Al Capone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, such a good film. I mean, mm-hmm. Andy Garcia's in it. Yeah, uh, there's so, it's so good. Definitely yeah. check it out if you have not seen that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, based on true story, a little yeah. exaggerated, but of course they're all yeah. going to be a little exaggerated. Mm-hmm. So we got ten, nine, eight. We got number seven. Number seven is a Bronx Tale. It's a little bit different film for mob movies. Yeah. Um, because this one here is taken in the eyes of a kid. Mm-hmm. Who lives in the neighborhood where the mob runs? But yep. His father, who is De Niro, yeah, De Niro doesn't play the mob guy in this movie. And that's that's when it first came out, and I saw the poster. I immediately sure go with Robert De Niro. I yeah. looked at that and I thought, oh, De Niro's got to be the bo- mob boss in this. And I was completely surprised when I watched it, and I found yeah. he's this the father, the bus driver, yeah, right. So. Great, I mean, great twist to it. Phenomenal film. And it, and he's mm-hmm. trying to teach his son that he doesn't need to be, you yeah. know, like the mob guy, Sonny. Yep. They fear him. They don't love him. He gives him that great speech of who's the tough guy. The tough guy is the working man. Mm-hmm. Get up every morning, go to a job every day. That's the tough yep. guy. Mm-hmm. Doesn't take a tough guy to pull a trigger. Yep. Uh, phenomenal film written by Chaz Palminteri, who played Sonny. And, uh, not only that, De Niro's character, how he how he goes and confronts him, right? Yeah, and he shows him. Look at that's the mob boss. I'm going to tell you, I'm raising my son. This oh, how great was that scene? Oh, when yeah, he goes yeah. in and he takes his look. I know who you are, Sonny. Mm-hmm. I know what yep. you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I'm not afraid of you. This I think is my son. I think best scene in the the movie. Phenomenal. For me, scene. anyways. You know, phenomenal. Scene. Uh, after that, we have The Departed. Which is another Scorsese film, this time mm-hmm. not with De Niro <laughs> or Pacino. Uh, this one has the great Jack Nicholson, mm-hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio, mm-hmm. Matt Damon, Mark yep. Wahlberg, Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all-star cast. Mm-hmm. Great film. Great film. A uh, little bit of a twist ending, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Did, didn't see some of it coming. Mm-hmm. But... Um, and loosely based on Whitey Bulger is J- uh, Jack Nicholson's character. Right. So it's loosely based on on a true character, not the mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought it was phenomenal. Sure. I thought it, I thought yeah. it was one of his better works. I mm-hmm. mean, I know he has that same style in all of his mob movies, but it was very, very good, very well yep. done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, after that, we have the top five. Mm-hmm. We have, I guess, we have Scarface. You can put these, I don't want to say, I guess if we're not doing 10 to 1, but they could flip flop in any top five. Well, these five could be, these, first of all, these five are going to be on everybody's list. Yeah. Everybody. I don't care who you're naming. Mm-hmm. And yeah, these five could be mix and match to be number one, number three, number four, sure. whatever it may be. But this one here, Al Pacino. Yeah. Directed by the great Brian De Palmer. Mm-hmm. Palmer. Sorry, I can speak. <laughs> uh, Oliver Stone. Uh, mm-hmm. wrote, I mean, just phenomenal movie. Yeah. Which we know is in two of the greatest movies of the 20th century. Mm-hmm. Uh, he of course puts an amazing performance in on that film. Again, mm-hmm. a lot of big names. Michelle Pfeiffer, mm-hmm. uh, Robert Loja is mm-hmm. in that movie. We know about him, mm-hmm. uh, in Over the Top, but, um, great film. And it, it's, it's a long one. Yeah. It's definitely not a short film. But again, very classic uh, mob connection type of movies sure. from Cuba coming into the United States and Florida. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we have, uh, again, Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Sharon Stone, and yeah. Casino. Unbelievable. Right? This, was a, this was a very good, uh, this was phenomenal film. Yeah. Phenomenal film. And uh, loosely based on true events and true yeah. uh, people. Mm-hmm. Names have been changed and so forth and so on. Sure. But I could see a lot of the, you know, loosely based and, or based on, I mean, I could see where they're, they got their concept pretty easily, right? Sure. It almost, yeah. it, it could almost write itself. If you're, if you're 
in that in that lifestyle or you know somebody that works in that the casinos it wouldn't be hard to put this movie I, I'm taking that with a grain of salt people yeah I can see where the great you know the the script writes itself almost it, right I probably didn't take long to write it no I mean Vegas was you know started by the mob started by the mafia and, it, and it's uh based in that world mm-hmm. yeah and uh yeah you're right I mean you could pick any one of the guys out there who started mm-hmm. Way back when, in the fifties and sixties, when, when uh, I imagine, I imagine they have stories. Oh, I'm right? sure. And there's I'm probably sure. stories that will never get publicly told. No, but there's just like there's, 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 I'm sure there's things in the desert that will never be found. That's right. <laughs> so, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And then the uh, the three heavy hitters. Yeah. Again, zero order. Yeah, this we just pulled them up this way. Well, maybe, you, maybe, maybe we get to number one. They, it might validate as number one. But hey, like I said, these five agreed. are on everybody's list. Agreed. And these three, I mean, these yeah. three could be the next one up. Number three is Goodfellas, mm-hmm. and this one here could be mixed and matched with number two, number one, sure, on anybody's list. Uh, quote unquote, by some of the real mafia. Mm-hmm. Lifestyle people, uh, the most realistic and the most, uh, truest form of, of that world mm-hmm. was that movie. Mm-hmm. Ray Liotta, who has just recently passed. Yeah. Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul Servino, who also recently passed. Yeah. Uh, Lorraine Bracco. I mean, such, such a good movie based on a true story. And I, and I, I really liked the time frame it was so, mm-hmm drawn out right like it's it wasn't just this happened in the short period of time they they took the movie from years and years right like yeah you know, i mean from, it covered almost a decade yeah. yeah yeah it did i mean it was uh remember he was a little boy at first yep. he was young he yep. was a young boy mm-hmm. and that ass movie i tell you it was there's so much in that film that is so good and so i mean it was one of the first films that I don't want to say, I mean, not put Scorsese on the map because he was very yep. established and, and respected by that point. But, you know, the panning of the camera, the, 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 the cutting of the songs that mm-hmm. matched the decade and such a good film, such good writing. Mm-hmm. Of course, the acting speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Amazing film. And if you haven't seen that film, shame on you. Mm-hmm. Go watch it now. I don't want to hear why. Just watch yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, it, <laughs> you'll enjoy it. I mean, you will absolutely enjoy that movie. I'm sure most of the people have seen it. But. Yeah, I would imagine so. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, number two here is The Godfather Part Two mm-hmm. with Mr. Al Pacino again. Yeah. I love that picture. Look at that picture. Well, it's, you know what? I look at that picture and you're just, I apologize for people listening, but we have the picture, the poster of Godfather t- Part Two up. Telling you, he, he's he's a powerful yeah. dude right there. Yeah, Al Pacino is sitting in his leather chair, mm-hmm. staring, looking like he's gonna, you know, put a hit out on somebody or whatever yeah. the case may be. Is gonna do, and you know, it's so funny because I mean, he 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 is not an intimidating man as far as size or what he, he but the way he played that role, yeah, he didn't have to be. Amazing. And right. then again, Robert De Niro was in that as well, which yeah. a lot of people kind of forget, I guess, so to speak, playing mm-hmm. the young Vito Corleone yeah. uh, in the flashback scenes because that movie went back and forth from Vito coming over to the United States from yeah. Italy to Michael already taking over the family, mm-hmm. which leads us to the first movie on the list, which is probably most people's, which is The Godfather. Right. Uh, now, you want to talk and- about – you want to talk about intimidating. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the definition of intimidating right Hands there. Hands down, one of, if not the greatest film ever made, mm-hmm. arguably. I'm sure a lot of people would argue that fact. Yeah. But it, Jimmy Kahn, Marlon Brando, Robert De Niro. I'm sorry, I apologize. Robert Duvall, mm-hmm. Al Pacino, Diane Keaton. Yeah. It just goes on and on and on. The writing, the acting, the lighting, the using of the light and the dark colors. Yeah. It was a phenomenal film. Phenomenal film. And I love the fact that you didn't, Michael took over the family and you didn't expect him to take over the family. Sure. Cause I mean, he's, 
he was the one that wasn't supposed to be in the family business. He went off to the war. He yeah. was in the army. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be the, like, like Vito says, you, you weren't supposed to be in this. He was supposed yeah. to be Senator Corleone or, you know, Congressman Corleone. Yeah. But, uh, it couldn't have been Sonny. He had too much of a temper. And yeah, he had short Fredo. views. That's for sure. Yeah. And it couldn't have been Fredo. Fredo just wasn't smart enough. <laughs> he just wasn't with it enough. He didn't really have the intelligence and the nerve yeah. to run the family. So calm, cool, and collective, Michael was the one that did it. Yeah. But, and, uh, uh, I'm telling you, that's a pretty powerful list. It is. And I mean, like I said, De Niro and Pacino being in half or more than mm. six and five of them. Yeah. They are the, uh, the mob connoisseurs of films. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, De Niro, he could just look at you and say a million words without opening his mouth. Yeah. Not, and not that we're promoting it, but I remember when, and wasn't on our list, but is just as good. The movie Heat with Pacino mm. and De Niro, when it came out, we went to the theater and, um, a few of us that went to saw it. my buddy, two of my buddies were smokers and I, we got out of that movie and they couldn't, they couldn't wait to light up a smoke. I'm he was, I'd never seen anybody enjoy a smoke that much on screen. <laughs> you know, it just, it was just a, you know, there was a, they got away from that and I understand why in, in the movies, but some, if you notice some of the movies are coming back and they're smoking right. again, but right. it was that more realistic. Like I, you know, the drinking and the smoking and after hours clubs and, and well, I mean, it, and it posed, it posed killing real, people just like, and, just like these movies, just like Goodfellas. Yeah. They go out to the, to one bar that, you know, is owned by somebody. They run up a $7,000 tab. Yeah. They're drinking, they're smoking, they're, they're yeah. there with their girls and their wives are home. I mean, it's a mm-hmm. crazy lifestyle. Yeah. But it was a realistic portrayal yeah. of that lifestyle. That's right. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not. It's no, not I mean, like I said, we're not promoting smoking, first of all. We're not but promoting I'm promoting anything. I'm not promoting having a girlfriend when you have a wife. No, I mean, absolutely, it is absolutely what it not. Is. But the, you know, the drinking and the, the nightlife and the, yeah. you know, their, their clubs and the clubs are fronted for drugs and gun smuggling. And it was that whole, like these, these guys weren't, these guys were out all night, right? Yeah. You wouldn't be home for days. Yeah. And, well, we remember uh, the one scene in Goodfellas where he comes home the next morning. Yeah. And the mother-in-law, they just got married. Remember? Yeah. The mother-in-law is like, where have you been all night? And he just starts laughing, turns around yeah. and walks away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So definitely, uh, not for, you know, if, uh, not the family man, you know, no, he should be. no, that's right. <laughs> but that's, that's the life they lead. And that's, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't agree with it. I don't condone it, but it no, was but a realistic portrayal. You know what? We, we discussed movies on this quite a bit and entertaining as hell. That list, I tell you, you can pick any one of those movies, Sunday afternoon, oh, anytime, Saturday night, whatever. But I'm just saying, uh, that's a great list to. Uh, oh yeah, the, the, watch the, the ten of those movies are remote drops. You mm-hmm. go by that film, any of those films, in any part mm-hmm. of those films, and you mm-hmm. come across it. I put the remote yep. drop. I'm done. Yep. I'll stay right here. So yeah, but good stuff, and I, I like you know the segue into it. I mean, the mob ties and the other stuff. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fun. Pretty good. Yeah. But, um, now completely different other than the mob movies, we have something totally different this week. We have guests, Tony. We do. We do. Our and, first uh, guest. Our first guest. Uh, this yeah. is pretty exciting for us. Um, it is. It is. Somebody had to be the first and who better than our first that's coming on. Yeah. And, um, we're excited that these guys are joining us and they have a movie out. American Hunt Story available on Amazon Prime and Tubi streaming everywhere. So I'm going to bring in our guests, Lorenzo Leonard and Telly Cher. There he is. There he is. How are we doing, guys? Great to see you. Gentlemen, Gentlemen, great to have you here. Welcome to round 14. Thank you so much for having us. It's it's an honor, and I absolutely love the name of your podcast. <laughs> it is pretty cool. <laughs> I'll give you that. Very cool. 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 Yes, you guys are great. I watch your podcast. I'm a fan. Thank you. We uh we absolutely appreciate it. So, gentlemen, American Hunt Story. Yes. Available on Amazon Prime. Available on Tubi. Yes. Uh, why don't you uh, start, Lorenzo, and introduce yourself to those who do not know you. I'm not sure 
why they wouldn't. And <laughs> Come on now. Tony why go. wouldn't you know Lorenzo? You know Lorenzo. Come on. All right. So go ahead, yes. Lorenzo, and then we'll let Tony uh, introduce himself too. So, sounds great. Uh, my name is Lorenzo Leonard, and our film is American Hunt Story. I am the star, the writer, and the producer. Uh, and it, it's an honor to uh, be here today with you. Great. And Telly, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? <clears throat> yes. Thank you, Round 14, for having me. Hello, team and Tony. My name is Telly Shear. Um, I'm the producer, writer, and director of American Hunt Story, and very excited to be here tonight. Well, we're excited to have you guys both, and you definitely are a good yin-yang together. So, you know, Telly's a, the calm end, I could see. Lorenzo has the caffeine intake, so that's, that's good. <laughs> Absolutely. I got the, yeah, I got it going. going. <laughs> yes. For, uh, yes. For, uh, for every push, there has to be, there has to be a pull. Right? Exactly. So can't, no, uh, that's awesome. So, mm-hmm. so you guys wrote it together. I'm assuming you said you're writer, uh, you're writer of, of the American Hunt story as well? Yes, we both wrote it together. Yes, okay. Tim. Totally. Okay, cool. And what was the inspiration for writing the film? Like where, where'd that come from? <laughs> uh, from writing this film? Well, we were in production for our film, for our series, our docu-series that's coming out after this. We were going to Vegas and we just started you know, whenever we're together with his brother, we're always talking about ideas. Mm-hmm. And we started chatting about those old, cheesy, late 80s, early 90s, 900 <laughs> number commercials that would come on at a, like 11, 12, 1 o'clock. Yeah. You know, where it would start out with the person on the TV and then it would go close up and it would be like, are you alone? <laughs> Do you need to call someone? Call 1-900 Intimate Connections. Yeah. And it was just so cheesy. And we were thinking, why don't we take that and kind of make fun of it and also add some real life issues with that. If you had some woman like that saying, Hey, do you have depression? And, and she's speaking in such a way, but she looks, you know, with her lingerie all sexy and and you're so intrigued by it. So that's where it, it came about. We had a successful Instagram series. We do short tidbits of it for 60 seconds. And then Telly said to me, why don't we make this into a feature? So we came up with some, uh, well, we researched trending topics okay. and the biggest trending topics were, uh, insomnia, uh, depression, and then kind of like a total failure of life. You know, uh-huh. what do you do? So then we took those topics and wrote American Hun story. <laughs> and what did it, now, now where does the title come from? Uh, title is actually very, tricky when it comes to like a film title because we yes. wanted we wanted something that that could um that could easily be linked to some other popular title because right like if you want it to be on like a streaming service and you're trying to be discovered you you wanted a title that's kind of catchy but also okay. resonate with some other like popular title so when mm. Someone searched those popular titles, you know, they could, your title could easily pop up as a follow up. Right. So that's okay. discoverability. That's one of the reasons why we came up with that. But also, as far as the story, like I was, <clears throat> I keep telling the guys, like, American Hunt story is like our story, like your story. Like when we wrote this, we, we were trying to write something that a lot of men in particular can relate like average men, hardworking men, men mm-hmm. who are marginalized. I mean, they're out there and we know that men who are struggling. So we wanted to, you know, do something for, for them. And we wanted to write something funny, but at the same time, there's a message behind that sure. when they, when people watch, they can relate so that's that's the story, the, the story meaning. Very sure. cool. No, oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Now, Lorenzo. Yes, um, sir. Hey, Tim, how are you doing, sir? You know what? I'm doing wicked, brother. I'm I'm so wicked. excited you guys are here. Hey. So, gonna say, hey, wicked, hey. Wicked, hey. Wicked, eh? Wicked, eh? Wicked, so eh? You know what? I, I, get I like when I get DMs much. from you because it always ends with the A. And, <laughs> and it's like I'm, sometimes I'll look at it and go, who's this? Who's this? Oh, Tim. Okay. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even realize I'm, I'm saying it. And, uh, you know, I, I'll go through the drive-thru and get a cup of coffee and I'll just, I'll just 
instantly say thanks, eh? Have a good day. <laughs> See, we need and that I in America. Even, Maybe we should know. change it in America and go, hey, can I have a burger? Yo. Bring <laughs> a little Rocky. <laughs> Yo. The, the American egg. I like that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so the one question I was thinking, um, how different, if any, um, you know, did you envision this from the start to the finish of this film? Did it change at all uh, mid-film, like your original concept from the final product, or did you kind of stay pretty much where you where you started from? It changed. I I will say there's an evolution yes. path. Like when it first started, like Lorenzo said, we're having fun. Mm-hmm. So we're on a route to Vegas, you know, we talk about brothels and talking about those cheesy phone, <laughs> phone lines. But as we were making those episodes and we we're trying to realize, hey, you know what? We, we have a message here that we can mm-hmm. talk about. Then we started to put in some story. Like, let's see, we, let's say we care, we create this character who, you know, goes through a lot of these problems that a lot of men are going to. Right. How do we put it together to have a storyline and how does it go through all these obstacles and challenges and realize, you know, how, how do you prevail in, in a hard time like that? Right. And yeah, so there is definitely an evolution going from just light and having fun to, to have something much more meaningful. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also, you know, you, what, what's good what, when you're making films, sometimes you're so into it mm-hmm. that, you know, everything seems the great to you, but sometimes you need to step back and let the audience sure. provide feedback. So we, we did a focus group mm-hmm. during the pandemic. Oh, wow. We got submitted to a film festival and we had a great audience of people and they also provided feedback and right. from that, we, we changed the film, and we're very excited with the final draft now. No, that's great. That's, uh, that's a great uh, great point about having the, the test audience, right? So Yeah, and it's amazing. What you think, at least what I thought they would laugh at, they weren't. And mm-hmm. the stuff I didn't think they'd laugh at, they were laughing at. <laughs> so I thought that Don't was... Figure, uh, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. But like you said, that, I mean, you have, you have to listen to it in some way. I mean, it's if all those people are laughing at that certain scene, it must be funny. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah, like, that, that definitely. And, oh, let us tell you what it's about. So we have American Hunt Story, and I play Stanley Birdie, who's getting divorced, as some of us might know. Look at that. Uh, our poster there made by uh, Chris Davidson. Mm-hmm. Awesome job he did. Yeah, so it's I play, great. Yeah, yeah, really good. So I play Stanley Birdie, who's losing everything to a divorce, as men, mm-hmm. many men might know that. And <laughs> he's getting beat down by all the harsh realities that come with that. Mm-hmm. And then this mysterious business card uh, shows up on his desk with to call a number, 1-844-HUN-FOR-FUN. And when he calls this number, this mysterious Mr. Hun from a different universe shows up and tells him, and shows him a way that he can uh, fix all his problems himself with this newly discovered superpower. Yeah, it's you know what I so I watched it uh, I watched it the other night and it I don't want to say like it had a, a I wanted to use this term but it had a Pulp Fiction feel like there was it seemed like there was a lot of little stories inside one big story. And it just, it just had that, you know, old oh, okay. school yeah. feel. Like it just had like a fun, you know, I, I got the, um, cheesy infomercials and then the messages and it just, it was just, it was just kind of fun. So when I watched it, uh, another night later, I, I knew you guys were coming on. So I kind of skimmed over it again to kind of, you know, I don't want to say I miss anything, but you got to really pay attention because there's a lot of stuff happening. Quickly yeah. on different scenes, right? So yeah, but no, I, I like how you said that because there is a lot of little stories. Yeah, uh, in in the film there, yes, a lot of little stories. Right, right. You could now, definitely pick up on the infomercial vibe, or really not even really infomercials. I mean, I remember those way back when, you know, when they were coming out. I, I was working, I was bartending at the time, in my late twenties, and I would come home. You know, I'm more wired from work, so I'm wide awake. You put TV on. It's not like it is now 
where you could stream whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, just watch what was <laughs> yeah. there. And they were. They were just slammed with those types of info, either the either the eight hundred numbers mm-hmm. or with the 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 crazy gadgets. You know, the sham yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. wows and the crap like that. But it one hundred percent had that vibe of that of seeing that commercial. Like it almost like that commercial was a prelude to this film. So mm-hmm. it was pretty cool. Pretty cool seeing that. Awesome, yeah. So I I was gonna say one aspect uh, at least I was trying to go for is there's this thing where sometimes let's say you have a problem, you have an issue, you go for a professional. And I mean it's portrayed in a film. Like Stanley the character was going for some professional, you know, consultation. But sometimes it just it didn't it just didn't work. It didn't right. It doesn't work and then you don't have a connection. You didn't really feel like you're getting help. And then here comes like a alternative method, something more exciting. Yeah. And you just felt like you could understand something if it comes from a different perspective or sure. from a different attitude that could help you. And I think that's one thing that the film was trying to show in a funny way, I'll say. Like that, like you go to like a serious professional, but then you don't feel like there's any, like you don't feel like it helped you. Like I, I paid for this and I didn't really help. But then right, I didn't get anything. There's anything. some other way. No, that's right. Yeah, sure. You. You're right. You're right. And I, I noticed that and I'm not going to, I don't want to give too much of the movie away here. So people should go and see it. But I, I found that when your character Lorenzo was talking and he was trying to sell you on life insurance, on life insurance and he's not. He wasn't really listening to you. You're trying to say, you know, give me more and, and he's just, just almost have the blinders on and his one perspective. But that's not what your character needed in this movie until later on when you found out what you needed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That, that's a very good point. Mm-hmm. So guys, is there any ideas of, uh, of a hunt story verse or a sequel or continuous well, timeline? We were, we were suggested uh, many, many times in doing publicity for this American Hunt Story Cougar Edition. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we'll have Telly come up with a couple ideas and see how we could, uh, incorporate that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I think that'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but right now we're in our post production for mm-hmm. like a docu-series called So You Think You Can, oh wait, no. So You Think You Can Act. So you got to say it exactly like that. It's all on uh, the delivery, right? Exactly, yes. <laughs> Which is kind of the first of its kind of all about actors, what actors go through, all about unions, agents, mm-hmm. uh, auditioning. We have a number of actors go through auditions. Uh, it's a 10 part series. We have industry professionals with the goal in mind of the show in showing you that they're not just say, Oh, work hard, never give up, mm-hmm. but an actual path where you can have success. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Like well, Sylvester Stallone, he wrote his way there. And mm-hmm. then from that, you had like Vin Diesel do the same, Matt Damon, mm-hmm. Ben Affleck. Uh, mm-hmm. If you don't know, Vin Diesel wrote a short film called Multifacial, which you could mm-hmm. find on YouTube. And uh, that later uh, was seen by Steven Spielberg. Right. Well, we must be yeah. on the same wavelength, uh, so to speak, because – the question I have in both of you is I'd like to hear um, what you think of this. You know, we do this little podcast and I just put it up on YouTube. When yeah. you guys are doing a feature feature film like this, what is the, you know, what roadblocks, if any, do you have to present it to Amazon or Tubi? How does one, like, you know, you make a movie and then you have to sell it to somebody or somebody has yes. to put it up. Like, what did you find, uh, what challenges do you do when you're putting a movie out like this? Yeah. Well, first you have to know how to put it out there. And we figured mm-hmm. that out by doing our short films, sure. which led to our feature films. And mm-hmm. then, you know, when you're an independent filmmaker, you really, it's like a submitting game. You do yeah. your best in post-production to get everything as perfect as you can. And then you're, uh, Kelly and Henry will, will, I'll get a list together and we'll submit to all our best distribution companies. And then we'll all do follow up calls. We'll hound these people. And in the end, we, uh, we went with the distribution company, which I'll let Telly tell you about that one. 
So, I mean, the industry is changing, honestly, like with all the streaming services, including YouTube itself.、Mm-hmm. So you have you have these services called aggregator, as well as the traditional distribution companies.、Mm-hmm. And what it is is some of these companies they they are mainly focusing on taking. Independent filmmakers' title works, so they actually try to help independent filmmaker projects. And what they do is they take your projects and they can help pitch because they play the middleman.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So the major streaming services they they don't talk to individual; they talk to middlemen. Mm-hmm. And some of these aggregators, they they could help, but you have to make something that's relevant, so that they find you relevant. They'll take, they're willing to submit for you.、Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, there are so many different forms of aggregator and submission,、mm-hmm. but the the streaming services they will look for relevant titles that will fit their platform. And if it does, and if you have a middleman, then they will take your title. So it's like this: like you have to trial, like there's trial and error, and then there's just like re- research work that you have、mm-hmm. to do. You have to do your due diligence. Yeah, go around and understand. And there's no one way to get into these platforms. Sure. Like, so it's definitely a similar. I mean, it's just like pitching a treatment or a script, or whatever, where you can get told no. Yeah. A dozen、yeah. times, and then finally gets told yes. Yeah, and、so、some people will say you have the best film. Some people, well, some people say yeah, they don't like your film, and some、mm. like it, and some say, well, you know.、Right. But you really just gotta, you know, like Sly says, just keep punching. You gotta keep、yeah. going and going、uh, because this whole industry is so different now. Exactly what Telly said. It's completely, completely. These big stars that are on streaming services is you would never see that five years ago. Sure. Right. Oh no. Right. No. No, not、okay. at all. No, that's great. Now,、um, I know you guys both talked about. So, you think you can act? That's it. That、yeah. right? <coughs> Wait,、um, try it again. You got to. You got to. So, you think you can act? One more time. So, you think you can act? Boom! <laughs> Boom! Hey,、awesome. love it. <laughs> hey. So,、um, <laughs> now, so that's a project you guys are continuing to work on, Telly、uh, Lorenzo. What other upcoming projects will we be able to find you guys in? Well, besides that docu series,、um, we had. Well, I mean, we are doing our individual stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like with with me, I'm working on this augmented reality. <coughs> Excuse me. Feature film project.、So、okay. It's it's more like on on a technology where because this is also a trending topic like artificial intelligence、mm-hmm. in different、mm-hmm. ways. There's a direct robots and then there is software and then there's、mm-hmm. everything in between like virtual reality. You can see like Google or Facebook. They're all developing stuff like that.、So、sure. Something will like. I'm working on to、um, to make like a feature film, but is, it a, is it a sci-fi、um, type film or is it a documentary? It's kind of like sci-fi、film. drama. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Would it be like、uh, the movie Her, but just instead of like、yeah. in、okay. in the in the little thing, it's actual person, right? Actual like robot. Yeah,、right? yeah. More like this augmented reality. Basically, what it means is you 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 could see <coughs> some kind of virtual reality through、yeah. a A set of lens which projected, yeah, you, nice. Up, but it's not really there. It's just you had to see through a window or、right. a monitor or something. Very so, cool. Yeah, something like that. What、well, um, at least I'm working on、mm-hmm. on my own.、Um, just, yeah, by you, Lorenzo. We got coming. Well,、up? last you might have seen me post stuff、uh, about with myself and like a purple face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I that. And, and that was for a Halloween product、mm-hmm. that's out right now. A little 
a, a little square digital screen about a, like kind of like a vampire who's afraid of flying and all kinds of crazy stuff. But you can have a purple Lorenzo in your home singing to you. I mean, oh, who wouldn't thanks. want that? That's the wow. one Christmas that, gift. That's the, the year, gift right that there. keeps on giving, right, Tony? That's it. That's it. Yeah. So that I'm gonna have to go to Spirit Halloween and see if I could find that. Yeah, it's online. It's uh, online. I'll post okay. where you can get it on my Instagram. But okay. I have that, and then um, I have uh, uh, two scripts I'm working on. I was telling Tim that I wrote uh, uh, a film that I'm pitching to Hallmark and uh, cool. a couple other Christmas, uh, you know, streaming service platforms. So yes. I'm working heavy on on that right now too. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Tina, so, my wife wants to really know. When the Hallmark movie's coming? Well, and, Hallmark uh, is quite. Are you a, filming this in Canada? Uh, <laughs> we're keeping out of Canada because everyone goes to Canada. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll well, you know, I'll, probably because that's where they all go, Canada and yep. Atlanta. But right now, I'm in that yeah. stage of e- trying to, like what we were saying before, is I'm in the stage trying to get them on the phone now. So I'm doing right. tons of emails and phone mm-hmm. calls. I'm getting hung up on all the time. Yeah. So I have to just continue it until I get that person it's kind of scary because you can easily send it to somebody and they could just say no and then i can see it on tv in like a sure. year right yeah so it's quite a you know interesting process you know right like there's a guy who says creed was stolen from him mm-hmm. which is n- another interesting story that uh is his title was uh uh Rocky, the Creed series. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And he's claiming he, he made that first. He said that he went, he finished writing that. He went to Ryan Cooliger, mm-hmm. had a meeting with him and Ryan told him it was crap. Mm-hmm. And then he said two years later, he saw it at the movie theater. And he <laughs> says, if you look at our scripts, he said they're very similar. Yeah. Uh, you know, but this, you know, yeah. so that stuff does happen all the time. <laughs> Yeah, no. that's got to be the scary part, like you said, emailing mm-hmm. somebody and hoping yeah. it doesn't get, get made yeah. without you. So, yeah, it's it's very scary. I think mm-hmm. that's where independent filmmaking comes, like us doing our own filming, mm-hmm. right? Our like Telly and I, we wrote American Hunt Story, mm-hmm. we get the right. distribution ourselves, we put it out there, and uh, that's I, I think a really good success story to just take control of your own stuff and sure. do them. Well, yeah. I think it's awesome, and I wish you guys luck with it. I mean, yeah. you know, anybody go on Amazon and Tubi to, to check it out. It's uh, it's funny. It's different. It's uh, it's definitely funny and different. I mean, you can get uh, a professional doctor who's in mm-hmm. our movie explaining insomnia, mm-hmm. or you can get a pretty lady in lingerie explaining insomnia to you. Now, exactly. who would you want to explain? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, that was taken from our lives because there was, you know, I just remember turning 21 and, you know, being at a weird stage where, you know, you want to visit those establishments. And right. for some reason, everything they said made sense to me. Right. No, that's right. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, well, I think we know why. Whether it made uh, sense or not, it made yeah. sense. It made sense. Yeah. So that's what, how it all made it into the film. So we're just so proud of American Hunt. So it really is awesome. No. I think it's awesome. Yeah. We thank you guys so much for coming on. Yep. Uh, wish you luck in the future. And, uh, Tim, you got anything else? No, I just, uh, Tony, you said it all. I mean, it's great. Um, you know, thank you very much for coming on, for joining the round 14 American Hunt story, Amazon Prime, Tubi. Um, great job. It's, it's definitely interesting and funny. Um, we kind of wrapped it all up in one. We appreciate uh, appreciate having you on. Thank you so Thank much, you. Tim and Tony. You're the best. Thank we love round 14. Much. Thank okay. you, guys. Take care, guys. We'll see you down the road. Thank you. Hi. I heard about one eight four four hunt for fun and honestly, like, I'm really looking for some fun. Definitely call me back. Um, Thank you so much for your advertisements. Hey, loser. Just calling to remind you have a crappy day and I hate you and I hope you trip and fall and break your face. Bye. So that's what I want to do for my kids. Leave them a legacy. Life insurance. Please, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get it resolved. But j- can you just please help me? Oh, no. You're going to pay for my house, my car, my traveling, my jewelry. No grudge. No anger. No, no apathy, no defiance, no frustration. Ah! <laughs> I so, so.
Lord Hunt for fun. Well, there you go. How about those guys? Wow. Well, that was something, <laughs> eh? That went pretty well. I know it did. Those well, are, you know, went well. It, it was a, a fun story to talk about. A yeah, hun that's story. <laughs> a hun story, right? So I uh, thank them for coming on. Yeah, it was cool. Glad to have you guys on. Appreciate it. What do you think? Want to do some trivia? Well, why not? We've done just about everything else. I know, right? Episode, we did some eh? movies. We did interview Rocky Jeez. Rambo. Of course, well, we got to do the trivia. Let me see if I can find the roller. Bl- uh, I keep saying roller blades, right? Uh, roller skates. A little skates. older than the roller skates. That's yeah, the wrong. roller skates, and uh, I got a pocket full of quarters. So there you go. Let, let's fire it up. Let's do it. There you are. Every time. Every time. <laughs> all right. So what do you got for trivia? Uh, I have five questions of oh, all boy. mafia movie trivia. Okay. I do not have any Rocky or Rambo. I have all I, my questions written and ready. I'm you know ready. what? I have all mine written too. No Rocky this week. All, Ooh. all mafia. So, uh, Ooh. Let's well, see here, if I, here's the deal. I okay. wanted to be kind of fair, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I did all true or false. Okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> In to return your fairness, I didn't do true or false, but I've got multiple choice. There you go. See How's that? that goes to show you how good we are at trivia. We need help now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> seems like we're getting. It seems like we're getting worse at trivia. Yeah, as we go that's on. Right. But hey, you it's know what? entertaining. They guess in the comments anyway, so we have fun. It's pretty much how it would go if we were actually doing trivia. We'd look yeah, for the multiple right. choice. All right, so you you want to uh, you want to start? Or you want me to start? Uh, I'll start. All right. See if I can see if I can get a lead here, real quick. All right, All right. Goodfellas. We talked about that in our top mm-hmm. ten. All right, Henry has a mistress in Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. Is her name Frenchie Carbone, Janice Rossi, Marie Vario, or Janice Two Times? Janice Rossi. That is correct. I thought I could, thought I could suck you in with the Janice two well, times. See, I, I remember that one because I remember the scene where the wife is pressing on the intercom. Yeah. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's just, it, it, for the superintendent. And she's not even, she's just holding it, eh? And calling her every name in the book and she the people are so coming mad. out. She, I don't she's, got the, she's got the kids with her. Jesus. <laughs> right? Like she's, she's pissed. No, it's like the functional so. 101 family, you know? How do yeah, you do that? And, and she's just screaming. All right, so I have so we'll go with the Goodfellas theme for my first question as well. Okay, okay. Goodfellas won the Academy Award for Best Picture. True or false? Mm-hmm. That's true. Sadly, that is false. That's you know bullshit. Who, you know, you know who that? beat it that year? They no. were they were nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. Guess who won Best Picture over Goodfellas? Mm-hmm. What year was it, Goodfellas? Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Pretty Woman. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, dances why? with wolves. Okay, listen, I like dances with wolves. I did too, and I loved it's Kevin a good Costner. movie. But this is—I no. don't want to go offside on Kevin no. Costner because I love Kevin Costner. No. But who the hell is picking? I think I think Kevin Costner wolves. would even admit that Goodfellas should have won. Yeah, who in the hell is picking that over? See, this is why the Academy Awards. I won't watch it. Exactly. It's Exactly. Complete horseshit. Exactly. Well, I'm Frank Stallone said that on his post that I'm day. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, this is not, garbage. This is not PG-13 anymore. I'm going to have to swear. No. But like I said, I like Goodfellas. I like Dance with Wolves. Goodfellas was one of the best movies made. Yeah. 
ever. All right, I'm done. Anyway. My, I'm sorry. Anyway. I, I got right, my rant out of the way. Number two. Forget Number about one. it. <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> All right, no, right, you're up. All right, Scarface. Okay. Scarface um, broke a record the time in this time that it was came out. Most people killed. Biggest snort. <laughs> longest feature movie. Or most use uh, most use of the F word. The F bombs were dropped the most times in that film. At that, that that is correct, and I don't have the exact count, but there was I don't a lot either. of them. There <laughs> I was a lot. The reason why I know that though mm-hmm. is because supposedly the Wolf of Wall Street beat yeah. it, and that's how I knew that that one had yep. was the original winner. But yep, imagine having that job. Press play Crazy. and count that. One. Crazy. Two. <laughs> Anyways. All yeah. right. Number two. I have a good one. The Godfather 2 mm-hmm. was the only sequel to ever win Best Picture at the Academy Awards. True or false? Oh, you know what? That's true. That is true. Yeah. No, I had to think about that for a second. I was like, there's nothing else that nope. sequels nothing usually else don't even do comes well. close. <laughs> yeah. No other sequel even comes close. Yeah. That is true. All right, so you are what are you one one for one one for two? I'm one out of two. One out of two, okay. Fifty percent. That's not bad. I know. All right. Uh, what do I got here? I got a Bronx Tale question. Ooh. Good okay. One. Which one is not one of Sonny's men? Oh All right. Frankie Coffee Cake, <laughs> Vinny the Wop, Jimmy Whispers, or Bobby Byers. What was the last one? Bobby Byers. I was going to go with the WAP, but now now you got me. I'm thinking second guessing myself. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say the WAP. Oh yeah. You know what? Last week you didn't stick with your gut. This week you see. Didn't. See. It's Vinny the WAP is not one of his men. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they wouldn't have called themselves a WAP because so. you got to have Frankie Coffee Cake in there, right? You remember that scene where you're from oh. Frankie Coffee Cake? No <laughs> good. I don't want that oh. face looking at these dice. Put him in oh. the bathroom. Uh, unbelievable, right? Like I said, he go, puts back him in the bathroom. Movies, go back and watch some of these movies. And he stayed in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he makes him stay in there. That's a great scene. Okay. Oh, I'm three for three. Wow. You're on fire. I th- You know what? I was, I'm doing my Italian good. heritage proud. Okay. All right. Number three. In The Godfather. Mm-hmm. We all know the famous scene of the horse's head in the bed. Oh yeah. Of the movie producer. I say that all the time when I, you know, if I, I play a lot of sports uh, pools, eh? And I pay up because I said, I don't want to wake up with a horse head in my bed. <laughs> exactly. People and people just laugh. So, so did they film that scene with a real horse's head? True or false? That scene was filmed with a real horse's head. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Now they didn't kill the horse. No, it isn't. But it but, was a real head. Yeah, that's right. That is true. So see, yeah, I did see. I knew, I knew that. That's not bad. I'm only beating you by one. That's not bad. Well, let's see what I can do here. All right. All right. Godfather opening scene. They're Ooh. celebrating a wedding. Yes. Michael's wedding. Sonny's wedding. Fredo's wedding. Connie's wedding. Ah, uh, that's an easy one. Come on, that's Connie's wedding. All right. Well, I know. I just want to get a question in there. Connie's about wedding. Connie. Good. And, yep. and a small fact of that, my father knows the guy that played Connie's husband. There you go. I just, yeah. you might, you might do a clean, clean sweep this week, Stallion. I might. There you go. Yeah, we should do. I got, I got one. Well. I got one more. So <laughs> I have, I have two more. Okay. So in in the movie Casino, mm-hmm. the tan, it was uh, the Tangiers Hotel was mm-hmm. where the it was t- taking place. Yep. Is that a real Las Vegas casino? True or false? That's false. It's not a real casino. That is correct. It is not. It was based on the yes. Stardust Hotel. Yeah, that's not bad. See, I'm only one off. See? You're three for four. Boy, if I get if I get so see, if I don't get this one, you get the next one. We tie. Well, then we'll have to go to a tiebreaker. So yeah, we'll have to figure that out. All right. <laughs> uh, what do I got here? Uh, am I in? Where am I here? I don't know. Oh, we got dead silence. Oh, I lost my questions. <laughs> All right. I guess you have to ask. That's all the questions I have. Oh, you're one done? More. Yep. Okay. All right. I have one more. Okay. All right. So if you get this one, we could tie whatever. All right. So the Bronx Tale yep. was based on a one-man play, mm-hmm. true or false? 
A one man play. Mm-hmm. Um, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Even though you guessed that was true, but it is true. <laughs> I did. I did guess it. Could, bad poker face, but I got it no, right. You all. The story behind that was Chad yeah. Palmateri put on a one man show and in, in yep. off Broadway in New York yep. City. And uh, Robert De Niro was in the audience and said mm-hmm. he wanted to go back and meet the the actor. Yeah. And obviously De Niro was already a name at the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, he said, I loved it, loved what you did. Mm-hmm. I want to make this a movie and I want to play the father. I, I want you to play Sonny. Yeah. How great is that? Right. And how do you say he sh- he goes in? And if you say yes to me, mm-hmm. we do it the way you want. Yeah. And they shook hands and they did it the way he wanted. You know what? Handshake deal doesn't happen very often anymore. Not anymore. Right? No. And uh, Not anymore. what a phenomenal that movie good. that turned out to be. Yeah. Great show, Tony. That was good. Right. Uh, fun trivia. Um, yes, I did guess the last one, but, uh, <laughs> right. and honestly, you know, it was a guess, but I it sounded like, the last one. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, you know what? That sounds, that sounds about right. Uh, even though, but it's a great yeah, story, and fun. thank you for telling fun. me. But um, anyways, thank you very much, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you to Lorenzo and to Telly for joining us on round 14. That was a yes. blast. Yes. And again, guys, um, American Hunt Story, available now on Amazon Prime and Tubi. I'm telling you, it's different. Yeah. Okay? It's different. It's entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you always know what you're going to get from Lorenzo, high energy guy. So a lot of energy. I, yeah. I appreciate them coming on. Tony, my friend, this was a blast. It was, it was a good episode. Yeah. Hope everybody again, enjoys uh, it. Hope everybody likes it. Let us know. Give us some comments. Give yep. us some feedback. Go check out Lorenzo's new movie. Yeah. And we will see you next week. Have a good one. See you down the road, guys.